Transthoracic Echo in general provides good views of the thoracic aorta, extending all the way from the aortic valve, round the aortic arch, and down the descending thoracic aorta to around the level of the diaphragm. The one exception to this is the distal ascending aorta and proximal aortic arch, and for reasons that we'll see later in this lesson, this area can be difficult to visualise on TEE. The aorta begins at the aortic valve, which is well seen on this mid-esophageal long axis view. And we can measure the diameter of the aortic root at the level of the aortic annulus between the attachment points of the aortic valve cusps. We can also examine the aortic root and take a measurement at the level of the sinus of Valsalva and at the sinotubular junction and also in the proximal tubular ascending aorta. As with all of the thoracic aorta, we should look carefully at the anatomy, looking for any areas of dilatation, but also any areas of atheroma and any signs of aortic dissection. We'd be looking for a mobile dissection flap in the lumen of the aorta. And the use of colour Doppler can be helpful in assessing flow, particularly when a dissection is suspected. We can examine the aorta in both long axis and short axis views. This is a short axis view just at the level of the aortic valve and we can see the three sinuses of Valsalva, the non-coronary sinus, the right coronary sinus and the left coronary sinus of Valsalva. And arising just at the edge of the left coronary sinus of Valsalva is the left main stem that is to say, the proximal part of the left coronary artery. By manipulating a probe, we can also often bring the ostium of the right coronary artery into view. In the lessons in this chapter, we'll be showing you how to obtain each of these views of the aorta. This view shows the aortic root and proximal tubular ascending aorta at a slightly higher level than the previous views. Again, we can take measurements of the diameter of the tubular ascending aorta in this view and examine the anatomy for any abnormalities such as atheroma or dissection. As we reach the distal ascending aorta and proximal aortic arch, then we start to run into a problem with TEE imaging. And this is well illustrated by this transverse view through the chest on MRI scanning. And what this illustrates clearly is the problem that we have in imaging the distal ascending aorta and proximal arch. And that's because the patient's esophagus is just here. This is where the tip of the TE probe will be positioned. And the distal ascending aorta is just here. And we can see that there's a structure in the way. This is the patient's trachea. And so at this point, because the air-filled trachea doesn't conduct ultrasound, this prevents the ultrasound from the TE probe from reaching the distal ascending aorta. So we therefore have a blind spot in this region where we can't clearly visualise the aorta. This only affects a short segment, and beyond this, in the rest of the arch and the descending thoracic aorta, there are no problems in obtaining good images. Here we have a view of the aortic arch, the proximal arch is just here, just as it emerges from that blind spot and becomes visible again, and then the rest of the arch is over here, and so blood flow in the aorta is travelling from left to right across the screen. As with the rest of the aorta, we should look carefully for atheroma, dilatation, or any evidence of aortic dissection. In order to visualise the descending thoracic aorta beyond the arch, we need to turn the TE probe physically through 180 degrees so that it's pointing posteriorly. It's very important when we do so to make sure that a probe is straight. In other words, that there's no flexion at the tip of a probe, as this can be very uncomfortable for a patient and runs the risk of causing trauma to the esophagus. Once we've turned the probe, we can then advance and withdraw the probe as necessary to image the whole length of the descending thoracic aorta. And we can usually visualise the aorta right down to the level of the diaphragm, just as we start to enter the stomach. 
And here is a typical long axis view of a descending thoracic aorta. We can see the lumen of the aorta here, and we can see a small amount of atheroma on the wall of the aorta here. This is the posterior wall, as the probe is of course here. We're looking posteriorly, and so this is the anterior wall of the aorta, and this is the posterior wall of the aorta just here.